G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going to do another clock. A clock with a difference though. Have you seen those, um, you know, river tables and uh, timber in resin and all that kind of great stuff? I'm going to do that. Try to do that. But I'm going to use my clock mold. So I got some thin timber pieces. I asked this guy to slice them for me really thin, like five mil. I think they came more like six or seven mil, but I'm going to try them. Now I've got two pieces sitting over there that are going to sort of sit there and there. I found it really quite difficult to get pieces of timber that were interesting. Like I didn't want them just straight. I wanted them gnarled and jagged and you know, holes and knots and things. So it was, I found quite difficult in my area to get them, but I'm going to keep looking because I want to do more. Um, I have a couple of hours ago, got them out and brushed them off, got the dust off and given them a coat of resin. I just poured the resin on and rubbed it on with my hands to seal it. Because if you don't seal your timber, when you put it in resin, all the bubbles are going to come up. So because... Oh, I could probably pick it up. I was going to take you over there, but I'll, I'll pick them up just carefully because they're still wet, sticky. Let me grab one. That's it there. Oh, it's not too bad. See, that one's going to go. And I, I went to um, my local men's shed. It was a bit scary, but I went to a men's shed and they got all these tools and things, which are amazing. I'm not going to put it down, but I got them to... Um, curve them. I made a template, a cardboard template. There it is. And I took this in and I said, can you cut me these pieces to fit? So they did that. So that one will fit there. And then I've got another one that's pretty much the same as that and it'll go there. So looking forward to that. But look at, look at them. Aren't they amazing? They're really pretty. So anyway, I put him back because he's not dry totally yet. And um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, do my numbers because they need to sit and, you know, contemplate life for about four hours while they're set up. So I'm going to do black because um, it's quite dark in these little areas here. Um, and I think the black would really play off nicely with that. And then I'm going to do like a, maybe an aqua pale turquoise, something like that for the, the other. So let's get on with it. I've got a little bit of resin. It's only about 60 grams, which is two ounces, and that's plenty for the numbers. So if you've got this mold, um, that's how much you need for the numbers, about two ounces. I'm just going to clean off my stick and I'll just wipe it, the paper towel, and then I can dip it into my black. I don't need a lot. There we go. Pop you in there. I'll get my lid back on. This is just um, Archery Creations Batman Black. It's the only black I've got at the moment. I have ordered another black from... Um, I think I ordered a black from Lorez. Hasn't arrived yet. But it'll be here next week. It's just that that one's getting a bit low now. I've been using a lot of black lately. So it's getting a bit on the low side. So I thought I'd better get another one. And I'm really enjoying doing the clocks. I, I really, really wanted to do one with timber. I'm still looking for some more pieces of timber. Mm, not really timber as such, but more like that one I showed you. More like a gnarly, interesting looking piece of wood. Not just a piece of timber with straight sides, you know. it's Like I said, it's really hard. I'm having a lot of trouble finding it. But um, I have... I have found this one gentleman. Um, he's a few hours away from me, so he curried them up for me. He milled them and sliced them nice and thin. Um, he's on the lookout for some other timbers for me, the gnarly ones. So once, well, hopefully he'll get them. And then I will, I'll do another video and I'll actually link him down below in my description um, for Australians anyway. We can't send timber overseas. <laughs> it's got to be um, quarantined and all kinds of stuff. Right, pouring my black into a little piping bag just to make it easier for me. 
And I want to try and get it all in the bag at once so I don't have to... There we go. It's just easier to hold it in there while you're starting off. I just find it easier to put it in a piping bag and then pipe the numbers out rather than, you know, trying to pour with a cup. Just, I just find it easier. All right, so it's a little bit tricky, I guess. Just be careful you don't spill any out the top. Hold it nice and tight. And give it a twist. Twist in. All right. And now I'm going to snip the top off. Do it over there. And we'll just sort of see how big that hole is going to be. doesn't look very um, opaque to me. Look at that. Hmm. I didn't check that. I'm actually going to... Oh, goodness me. I'm too busy talking. Maybe I haven't stirred it. Hang on. I think I need to make it a bit blacker. going to pour it back out and hopefully I won't make too much of a mess. I didn't actually check the opacity of it. Like I said, I'm too busy talking. Or maybe I didn't stir it properly because it was a bit thick. And I think I'll put a little bit more in actually. I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to fix this up, get another piping bag and I'll come back to you. Right, all done. I have another piping bag. Put a little bit more black in it. So it's a little bit more opaque now. There we go. Snip the end off. I better get a piece of paper towel so I can wipe my drips. I need to change hands because I'm right-handed. Try and hold it up like that while you're twisting so that it doesn't all run out. It's a bit tricky, but once you get started, it'll be, it's better. All right, here we go. Now, last time I overfilled them. I'm going to be careful not to do that this time. And I need to bring my little paper towel with to catch the drips. And there we go. If you don't want to see me do all this, just fast forward. See, it doesn't matter if you don't fill them up all the way because you're going to get another layer on top. I'm going to do a clear coat. Oops, doesn't matter if you drip. You can just wipe that off with your baby wipe. My resin's pretty thin and I, I chose a thin resin just because it's got really good bubble release. The thicker resins don't have such good bubble release. And I don't want any bubbles caught in there. All right, just twisting it up again. So, yeah, um, once this is set up a little bit, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do just a clear layer. And then I'm going to stick my timber down onto it. I am a bit worried. The only thing I'm worried about is trapping air bubbles underneath the timber. That is my only concern. You know, when I lay the timber down, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how it's going to go until I do it. I guess if you're doing it the other way where the timber was on top, you know, you could torture bubbles, but the timber is going to be face down because when you unmold, the timber against the mold here is going to be the top. So we're doing things backwards with the mould. So I'm hoping that, um, yeah, I'm not going to get air bubbles trapped underneath. Probably will. I mean, I put crushed glass in resin the other day and I've got air bubbles trapped. <laughs> oh, dear. It's got a little bit of resin left. I'm just going to top them up a bit. Is that a hair? 
got a little bit left so I'm just going to go around again. I didn't want to put too much in just in case I ran out. But I've got a little bit left so we'll just top them up. And uh, resin self-leveling so it'll it'll smooth out. What is that? No. I'll come back and clean that up. Nearly done. See, it doesn't matter if you don't go over the whole number because it will level itself out. I just don't want to put too much in like I did last time with the white. Oh, gosh. Went over. Um, when I did the white numbers, I put a bit much in and then I had to go and take some out, which made a mess. Okay, so I've got a little bit left. We didn't need to make up two ounces, but I'd rather have a little bit more than a little bit than, than run out, hey? Okay, so I'll just put that aside. Now I'm going to get my baby wipe and just clean up my mess. Like so. And then um, we just have to play the waiting game and wait for this to set up. Uh, it should be all right in about four hours. This resin sets up pretty quick. It is the Platinum... Uh, super clear this one and it's oh what is it now it's quarter past three in the afternoon so I'll come back this evening and um, do the next coat how am I going what else did I miss it cleans up really well um, I will give it a, a quick little torch with my little baby oh that's <laughs> that's not um, black um, now this this mold is still my um, prototype my other ones they're on the way it's very exciting they'll be here in about a week so pretty exciting oh the other thing um oh i'll show you later but my um clock mechanisms have arrived uh, i mentioned to you in one of, my, one of my previous videos my clock video that i'd i've ordered mechanisms to fit this particular mold um which is nice and deep I bought this one mechanism for my other clock and it was like the thread on it was tiny. It wouldn't even go through. So if you are buying clock mechanisms, you know, not necessarily mine, but if you are buying clock mechanisms, you have to make sure that the thread is long enough to accommodate your board, your clock. Now I'm just torching with a really little torch, a little tiny guy just to get the bubbles. I can aim exactly where I want it to go. It's not going to damage my mold. I'm just going to go over real quick, popping those little bubbles. And there we go. We're done. Um, doesn't really matter because, as I said, this is the this is the back. So the numbers underneath, hopefully, cross fingers are bubble free. This one's still got a little bit much in it. I don't know why how I managed to overflow that one, but I did. I did. All right, now leave it at that. Um, I'll show you the clock mechanism later. You're probably sick of hearing my voice at the moment. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll see you all soon um, for the next layer. I'm back. It's 7 p.m. And um, my numbers have set. I've got... Um, uh, what did I do? I did... I wrote it down... 100, 110 grams of A, 50 grams of B. So that's 160 grams. And I'm just going to work out which way I have to put these in before I put my gloves back on. Which is the better side? I don't think it makes much difference really. I like that there. One piece is slightly thicker than the other. It's just the way they were cut. Never mind. Um, that one's got the longer, wider piece there. I might put that one down that way. And then that goes the opposite way. See, they're actually the same, the same sort of piece. So that one goes there, that one goes there. Okay. I'll put them over here in that order. Move my 
paper out of the way that it was sitting on. Okay, oh my gosh. I am I am nervous about this one, you guys. I'm really worried that um, I'm going to get bubbles stuck underneath the timber. But I don't think there's any way around it. I've gone with my thinnest resin. And it's not... I guess it'll help because it's a good bubble release because it's so thin. But um, regardless of how thin it is, when you put something on top, air's going to get under there. So, But I will squish it down as much as I can. I'm just going to lay this down. This is the Platinum Ultra Clear Food Grade Resin. So it does not do the Amine Bloom or Blush. Um, I didn't choose it because of that, because it's the top layer that gets the blush anyway, um, which is the side to me, which you're not going to see anyway. But I chose it because it's really nice and thin. It's the thinnest resin I've got. So I'm just going to spread that out. And, you know, you have to make sure that your numbers are dry, otherwise they'll run. So, yeah, make sure your numbers are nice and dry. I should be taking my time with this so I don't get too many bubbles in it. But like I said, it's a nice thin res resin. So if any bubbles come to the surface, because I can see some there now, because I've been pushing this resin around, I can torch them. But I can't torch what's under the timber. So, yeah, I'm not sure, like, whether or not... Um, like wetting, like putting a, a thin layer of resin underneath the timber would help. Like so that they both wet. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking maybe that would help. I'm not sure. What, what do you think? Have you guys ever done that? Like wet the underside of the resin and then plopped it down. Would it make any difference, do you think? I don't know. All right. Once I push it down, it'll kind of spread to the edges. Oh, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. All right. Actually, I should probably, because that's going to the edge there, so I should make that go to the edge as well, shouldn't I? I always rush though when I'm doing a video because I know you're wa you're waiting and you know you don't want to spend too much time here with me so I I do kind of rush a little bit but I shouldn't because I want to do it properly All right so that's that's covered I think where it's going to be touching mm. so I could just pop it in there and then push it down. You can see the resin kind of comes up through all these little holes. Please don't have bubbles underneath. <laughs> I'll have to weigh it down with something, I think. Push it back as far as it'll go. Into the edges there. All right, so that's number one down. Number two down. Here we go. Push that into the edges. And down here as well. So maybe I should have torched, probably should have torched before I even laid them down, shouldn't I? I didn't, I didn't think about it. Okay, here we go. All I can do is pop it down and then press it and, and hope that if there's any bubbles, they'll push out. But I don't know how they'd push out. Oh, let's see, there's some coming to the sides there. I'm, I'm hoping that I've sealed it enough, you know, with the coat of resin. I'm hoping that that's given it enough of a seal that it won't release too many bubbles. Because when I did my first timber slice in resin, I didn't seal it. And all the bubbles came out of the timber. Oh, it was a mess. It was. 
Okay, so that's um, that's done. Now I'm just going to spread the rest of this resin to the edges, like so. I didn't want to make up too much resin because I didn't really want it coming up too high on the sides of the timber. Well, I hope I've got enough. See, the more I'm swishing it and pushing it around, the more bubbles I'm getting. Might not have made enough up, actually. I was going to make 240 grams, but then I thought when I push this, the timber down, it would displace a little bit and I wouldn't need so much, you see. It might be all right. I'll just push it in here. I just would like the whole surface covered though. And then it can sit and then tomorrow morning I'll come through with my aqua. I'll have to go and choose a colour. And um, fill it up with that basically. So I'm going to wipe off all these bits here on the top. See I was, I was kind of hoping that the aqua would go through the the holes but because it's clear you'll still be able to see the aqua through there hey because when I've pushed it down it's <laughs> the resin's popped up through all the little holes I'll pinch a bit from there it's like when I squeeze my salada biscuits with my Vegemite it pops through all the little holes you guys in the states but we don't know what a salada biscuit is I don't know it's a cracker with little holes in it and then when you squish the two together all the Vegemite comes through the holes like little worms coming up through the ground all right I think that will do I'm not covered over here yet uh, I might pinch a little bit and just put it over there but I'll, I'll do it I'll do it later we don't need to do it now while you're watching um, so what I am going to do though I want to just get rid of these sort of blobs that have come through. I'm just going to smooth that off with a piece of paper towel just to get those surface blobs off just so that it dries smooth like so. Okay, 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 we're done. All right, so um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take a little bit of resin out of the center and just fill in. There's a couple of little holes there. Um, have I got any left in my cup? Mm, not really. <laughs> tiny little bit. I don't want to have to make up a tiny little bit more. Anyway, I'll smooth it over, see if I can fill in all these little areas. Um, and then that will be it for now. We'll have to wait again for the next layer. And um, yeah, smooth that over. Yay, it's working so far. And I don't see any bubbles coming out the sides. See, when I did my other one that I was telling you about, all the bubbles were coming out of the sides because I hadn't sealed it. That's why I thought I'd seal it with resin because there's different things you could seal them with, you know. Um, I don't know, all kinds of things. But I just thought, no, nah, I'm just going to go with resin because it's going to give a really good solid covering. So I went with that. So I'm going to fill in these little gaps and um, I'll see you in the morning. Oh, it's so excited. Oh, it's looking good. See you soon.
I'm back. It's the next day. Resin has set. I did a couple of little samples of resin because I, I couldn't decide what color to do in here. So this one was um, Peacock and then this one was Neptune. They're both really pretty but I just think that they're a little bit on the dark side because I've got the dark numbers and the dark timber. So um, I decided I would go with turquoise. And then I thought, oh, that's a bit boring. Let's mix another color through it and get some sort of a shimmer. So I'm going to add this Pearlex Sky Blue because the Pearlex gives a really pearly look. So I'm going to do that. Um, I don't know how much resin I need because, I mean, this is basically taking up half of the space, isn't it? So I've made up two cups. If you don't have any timber in the big clock mold, it holds about four cups. And initially I only put in half a cup, so I've made up four, uh, two more cups. Um, and if I don't need it all, I'll have to quickly go and make a coaster video. <laughs> but this, this is my new clock mechanism that I was telling you about that I'd ordered. So I personally don't like the seconds hand, I just like the hour and the minute. So that's it there, that's the black one. It's got a little hanger on it, all ready to go, so that you can hang them up. Uh, quartz, battery in there. Now... This is already, I've just put it on here so I don't lose them. It's already got its little rubber washer and then the metal washer and then the nut that I've put on. And this, this is quite deep, this area here. Um, it's specifically for my mold. So you can use, the mold's 10, mil, 10 millimeters deep. So this one goes up to like 10 to 12 millimeters. If you've got a nice thick clock board, use this one. Um, so that's the black one. I'll be putting that one on. Um, I'll show you my other colours while I'm here. I've got the gold. The gold would look nice as well, just because you... No, maybe I'll go gold. Oh, I don't know. Because just because you've got black numbers doesn't mean you have to have black, does it? That looks pretty, because it's kind of picking up this goldy look here. Anyway, that's the gold one. Um, and that, that's the silver one. So these are pretty just minimalistic. They're square edges. Like I said, no seconds hand. I personally prefer them like that. I think they look more elegant. That's the white. So that would work as well. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, let me get my gloves on. And I'm going to mix up some colours. Um, now, getting back to the clocks. I know a lot of you that <clears throat> have ordered the clock mould already. And uh, it's still another week away. If you want the mechanism and you think, oh, I've already paid for shipping... Don't worry, just use the little PayPal me link down below in the description and send me $12 Australian and I'll add it to your order. That way you're not paying shipping twice, okay? So just do that. It's a bit more difficult for me to send out a heap of invoices, but if you just want to use the PayPal me um, and just send me the $12 Australian, like I said, I'll just add it to your order. Or if you're wanting to buy the clock mold and the mechanism all at once, that's fine. You can do that um, and just do the combined shipping in my eBay store. Link is below. All right, that's enough sales talk. I just want to make sure everyone that wants one can get one. Okie dokes. I think half the clock molds are already gone. <laughs> Already sold. All right, so there's my aqua and there's my blue. Let's give that a mix. <clears throat> now, I haven't mixed up all my resin. I've kept some there. Just in case, like I said, I, I don't need it all. And then, you know, I've, I can use the clear. I can go and make up some more. I can do some coasters or something. I want to try some coasters with um, white in them to get pretty effects with the white pigment paste. So that'll be coming up. It's got kind of a goldy hue to it, hasn't it, this turquoise? Yeah, I'm in two minds about what colour clock hands to use now. It's getting a bit warm, this. <clears throat> was in a big, deep jug, wasn't it? Now, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see because the my prototype mould is blue. 
But when the when the others arrive, they'll be white like all my other silicon molds are. Now you're going to make sure that's opaque, okay? Because if you don't have it opaque, you'll be able to see your mechanism through the back and you don't want that. On the other hand, you could put a piece of timber down the center, drill a hole, slide it over that little nib, and then you won't and then you can have like clear or whatever color you want. But if you're going to see if you're going to put the mechanism behind that, just make sure that it's not clear because you don't want to see it. And I'm going to stir this again because I find that the little pieces of mica powder tend to float up. Now I'm using the Platinum Ultra Clear Food Grade Resin. It's a nice low bubble resin. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to sort of pour some of that in and pour some of that in. And then I'm going to come in and do my blue. Let's put that stick back in there. I love these mica powders. They, they really look like shimmering velvety fabric. Put that through there. I just kind of want it to blend a little bit. Not necessarily all the way. Now the other thing with this, oh, let me get that resin off my hands. Now because the timber is lower than the mold, we're going to cover the surface, okay? And then hopefully all these little holes and things, you'll be able to see the colour through them, maybe. <laughs> Some of the holes are all, all not very big, but hopefully we'll be able to see through them. So here we go. Now we'll need to make up some more resin. Uh, not more resin, some more colour. Because like I said, we're pouring over the top now to get up to the height we need. And that resin will just flow. There's a little gap there. It'll just flow in all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, I'm going to mix up some more I'll put in my I'll put in the listing how much uh, resin you need but like I said it's four cups or a thousand grams. Okay so I think probably gonna need another same amount as I had before. Yeah, pretty close to being accurate, I think. As we use all this up, look at that. No coaster making for me today. <laughs> I like to pour the pigment powder in first, just so it kind of gets trapped by the resin and then doesn't fly up and hit you in the face when you stir it up. That'll do. Pretty equal. All right, stirring again. So the colors will just kind of blend together. I, I don't know that I'll give them much of a swirl. I'm, I may do, we'll see what happens. I just kind of like the two colors together, but I, yeah, I may give them a bit of a swirl. All right, that's that one's first stir come back and stir again after the mica powders have had a chance to float to the surface. These colours look really good. Mm, I'm glad I did the two-tone. I've got so many ideas of colour schemes that I want to do for these clocks. I just need to get myself some more bits of timber. And uh, when I was at the men's shed, <laughs> the men's shed. Yeah, I didn't even know things like that existed. But anyway, I said to the, the guy who was just cutting them, I said, oh, do you mind if I video you just cutting that piece? So he said, no, that's fine. So I've put it at the beginning so that you can see how he, he cut these. 
So it's there. All right, that's the second stir and the second stir for you. Just take your time to stir, hey? You don't want any bits of mica powder sinking to the bottom and spoiling your features. So make sure you stir it up really well. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put some more blue through there. Goodbye, pretty timber. We will see you on the other side when we unmold you tomorrow. Not quite sure how to unmold it. <laughs> I don't know. Just be careful I don't break my timber, I guess. No, it should be all right. Okay, and then this one. A little bit of that through there. I've got enough. I will just smooth over the top. I guess I could have had a little bit more, hey. But as usual, I, I never want to make up too much and then waste it, you know. What have I got? A little tiny bit. Not much. No, that's it. Right, now I'm just going to basically just cover over the timber. It will eventually level itself, but I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a helping hand. Make sure that it's all pushed up to the edges there. And I probably made just enough, hey? Now let that drip down through there into the edges there. Cover you up. Push that down there. I wasn't exactly accurate when I went and put my little lines on for him to cut. I'm a little bit out. But I wanted to, I, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be terrible if I get home and it's like, you know, teensy a little bit too big and it won't fit in my mould. So... I thought just cut on the inside of my line that way I'd rather have it a little bit smaller and actually fit into the mold than have it a bit bigger hey that was my reasoning okay here we go nearly covered still got a little bit of room left I mean if I wanted to I could oh there comes the rain again I could add a little bit more resin. This piece of timber was thicker than that piece. So yeah, I could if I wanted to just make up a tiny bit more resin. Probably only needs another half a cup maybe. I may do that just because it's not flat there on the back there. It's been raining non-stop for four days. Everything's soaked. It's been raining so hard, the gutters have all overflowed. Like they're good gutters, but sometimes they just can't handle the amount of rain that comes down and they've all overflowed. Right, so there we go. Uh, now I'm going to give it a bit of a torch, just with my little torch here. I think he's running out of fuel. I can see the little bubbles popping, but I think I'll have to fill him up. So I'm not going to I'm not going to swirl where the where the blue and the turquoise meet. I think they'll just sort of melt into each other. So I'm just going to let them do their thing rather than me doing too much. I'm a bit disappointed at that. I was hoping I'd have enough to cover it, but yeah, like I said, I'm just like about half a cup too short. So four cups here, half a cup to begin with, another half a cup, that'll be five cups, no, three cups, <laughs> oh my gosh, three cups, as opposed to four cups if you're not doing anything in the center, any timber. Just because you can see how this timber is sticking out, it's, it's not quite flush, I want it to be flat on the back. So I'm going to do that, you don't need to watch me do that. 
Um, and um, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow and we will unmold this baby. So looking forward to it. Oh, it just looks really blue through my screen. It's not, it's aqua. I always have this problem, aqua and blue. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. Hope it dries well. Hey guys, I'm back. It's the next day. I'm super, 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 super excited. I've just turned this over upside down. Hey guys, I'm back. It's the next day. I'm super, 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 super excited. Very super excited. Now, I've just flipped the mould over because because it's such a big mold, I thought it would be much easier just to peel the silicone off than try to peel the silicone, uh, the resin out of the silicone. So that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> right, are you ready? Let's start over here. Let's get my fingers underneath it. Now I'm going to go slowly because remember we've got those numbers that need to kind of pop out first. So you can see it's sort of grabbing there. You guys are going to see before me, because I'm behind the mould. Whoop, there we go. I've got a number. I can feel it go pop. Might loosen, go around and loosen all the numbers first. Oh, I can see a piece! Oh my gosh! Let's not do any more. Let's just get the numbers out. Pop, pop, pop. Pop the numbers all the way around. Oh my gosh, did you see that, you guys? Wow. That looked amazing, that little sneak peek that I just had. Let's get all these out. All right. Are we ready for the big unveil? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, wow. I know I say wow a lot, but oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Turn it around like that so you can see the numbers. Oh, there's one bubble just there. It's actually a hole. I can fill that in. That's okay. Right, now let's look for bubbles. There's a bubble there. This was what I was worried about, you know, trapping the bubbles underneath. But um, that's that's okay. There's only that's probably the biggest bubble just there. Look, I'm okay with that. I am. It, it doesn't detract from it, and I knew that that was going to be an issue having the bubbles under there. Oh wow, that is just amazing. I think if there was a bubble like in the the blues and the aquas there, that would really stand out. Look at the edges. I'm going, to, I'm going to take you down and look at these edges. It looks as if it's actually a 3D look here. Because you know how the resin kind of pulls away from edges? That's just amazing. So I've only got that little that little hole there to cover in. Do you want to have a look? Do you want to go down and have a look, closer look? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Let's go down and have a look. Move around this way so we get away from that ring light. Now again, you probably can't really see the turquoise. So it goes into turquoise there, but it just looks blue through my screen. When I put the photo up, I'll I'll change it so that you can see the the dual colours. Now look at that. Look how the number is half on the colour and half on the timber. I love that. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you over here. Look at that. Looks like there's this little I don't know, it looks like a 3D, it really looks 3D, how that resin sort of where it meets the timber, it's leaving that little channel there, and it's even got like a little shadow happening, it's so amazing, and you can see the little, little tiny micro bubbles in there, in those little holes um, that the timber had, but look, I don't know, I, I don't know if there's any way I can stop that from happening um maybe maybe next time i can 
paint resin onto the timber so that it's wet and then put it down I don't know you guys let me know if you've got any ideas on how to stop that from happening but look, I, I knew it was going to happen I'm just glad it's only little tiny micro bubbles look at that it's like this the inland there and the water coming through you can probably see the difference in the colors there oh look there's some aqua you can see the aqua here and it changes the different shades of blues it's so pretty I love it again you can't really see the the aqua as well as I can but I just poured it on and, and let it sort of blend together those those two colors right now we have to decide on clock mechanism hand colors let me pop you back on the tripod hang on right now initially I thought I was just going to go with black so there's the black I mean obviously this mechanism would be underneath but there's it with black hands and let's try the gold there's the gold Oh, I do like the gold. As I said, it picks up this golden colour in the timber here. <clears throat> um, once you've put your mechanism in, like you can change it. You don't have to leave it there. Um, just don't glue it onto the back. Because, you know, one day down the track, if, if it breaks or if you want to change colour or whatever, um, you know, you can just change it. So, But you can't really do that if you've glued it down. Oh, I don't know, you guys. Black. Gold. Can someone answer me, please? You're not being very helpful. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you the silver. Not that I'd put silver on anyway, but silver. White. So those two are sort of out of contention. I don't know. I don't know whether to have the gold as just a pop color or just keep it all simple with the black I don't know I'm gonna have a, <clears throat> I'm gonna have a think about it I actually actually have to go and get a battery I'll be right back right I pulled that one apart you know how I had it sitting like that because I set them up like that for my photos for eBay so I just pulled it apart and this is what you get you get your little top pin in your matching color that's the minute hand the hour hand a washer a nut and a plastic washer I think is that called a washer I don't know anyway that goes on first like so <clears throat> little battery I'll put him in make sure he's gonna work she goes in the little pointy end first and then it just slides in Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but I can see things going round and round, little cogs and wheels going round and round, so it's working. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is because I need to get underneath it, I need something, I need to just stabilise this. It's pretty heavy. Pop that under there. You have to make sure that the top, the hook is facing up to your 12. Pop him there and see how it's kind of wobbly now. I just need to get something to pop under there just to stabilize it while I work on the front. So bear with me. Let me go and grab that. Right, I've got two bits of wood that I had lying around in my studio. And I've put some pop sticks underneath my little mechanism there just to lift it up to the same height. I've got it facing towards me and now where is it where, where'd you go there it is I can just lay it back down again and um, now you see there's some thread there still you need to have a long enough shaft there that's that whole length there's the shaft and then that gold bits the thread so you have to have enough of the thread that you can actually thread your bits and pieces on All right so then the washer goes on next and then the little nut goes on next and then that needs to be tightened so 
Don't do it too tight, but it does need to be tightened. So I'll do what I can with my, my fingers. Actually, I think that needs to be lifted up a little bit more, that mechanism. I need to lift it up a little bit more. Hang on. I'm still learning what to do with this, you guys. Actually, I won't. I'll just I'll just put my hand under there and hold it, um, and while I tighten this, that'll be that'll work. I'll just hang on to it, okay, like so. There we go. It's tightening. Now I'm going to use my little plier things just to tighten it just a little bit more. Not too much, but and I'm holding on to that piece of the back. Make sure it's still facing, I don't know if it's still facing 12. Is that 12 there? No. <laughs> I'm crooked. There we go. Oh, I can fix it up later. <clears throat> it's a bit difficult to do when I'm trying to do it with the the camera keep it in frame all right I'm gonna hang on to that black bit on the back there hold them both nice and tight hold the black bit the mechanism nice and tight while I turn this bit until it won't turn anymore don't do too much just until it's nice and tight all right let's pop you back down now Yay, it's done. I've got a tiny little bit of thread there sticking up still. Just don't overfill your mould, hey? <laughs> Otherwise, um, that won't fit. Yeah, so don't overfill it. Right, <clears throat> here we go. Now, start with the small hand first. And you just sort of push it on until it goes click. There we go. Now, whatever you do, you guys, do not turn your hands, okay? You'll break the mechanism. You turn it from the back. Don't just push that around and go, oh, I want that to be three o'clock, so push it down. Don't do that. You'll break your mechanism. Now, the next one, give it a bit of a, a push down until it sits into its little spot. I think that's about right. And then your little cap piece, and it's the same colour as your hand. So it's a gold one, or black one, or white one, or silver one. There's a tiny little hole inside there, and that's got to sit on top of that little pin in there. Maybe at some stage I'll do a close up of me putting it together. But I think that you I think that you get the general idea. Yay! It's done. What do you think of the gold? Did I do a good choice with the gold? I, I so don't know don't know now these are made out of aluminium I think very thin I mean you know if yours come and it's a little bit bent you can just you know straighten it out but it should be fine now turn it over so this is how you have to change your time this little guy at the back here and for me it's what is it 8 8 17 in the morning 817 let's have a look round we go round and round we go where we stop nobody knows 817 keep going until it says 817 8 that's about there I think 817 ish alrighty there we go. It's done. It's done. Oh, I'm so excited. This was this was a huge challenge for me from um, ordering or finding the timber, um, getting someone to slice it down nice and thin, um, sealing it so that, you know, so many bubbles wouldn't come out. But the only bubbles, like I said, that have popped out or, or got trapped were inside these little holes, which... I don't think detracts from it at all. It's really pretty. So anyway, let me know what you think. Um, <clears throat> oh, did I mention to you 
<clears throat> and I'm not sure if I did. If you wanted one of these. Oh, yes, I did. I said send me um, $12 through PayPal me. Don't forget to tell me the colour, though. Like, don't just send me the money, because I want to know what colour to send. If you don't, let me know. I'll just send black, okay? Um, but you can put a little note in there and just say white, silver, gold, black. But if you don't say anything, I'm not going to chase everyone up. I'm just going to send you black. All right, so there we go. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. So happy. My first timber clock. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'm going to find a spot out in the house to stand it up and watch it. Um, I'll take a photo of it. Oh, look, it's moved. It's moved. It's nearly on 8.20. I haven't even had my coffee this morning. It's late and I need my coffee. I'm going to go and make my cappuccino. Love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.